so uh, I had a uh, little bit of a problem with, uh, did you send something? Yeah, PowerPoint. <laughs> Troy? Troy? Steve? Or did you send it to Troy? Oh, I sent it to Anne. Oh, you sent it to Anne? I didn't know I was supposed to send it to you. So you sent it to Troy? We can we can go two minutes over. What do you say, people? I can. <laughs> yeah. well, let, me, let me start uh, describing the problem that I'm essentially having uh, in my class. So I like to give these kind of uh, a little bit bigger. So I have a lot of accelerated students and a little bit bigger problems that brought together a lot of mastery ideas. So. Um, they have mastered like four or five things. Can they bring them all together into a single um, problem and work that problem from start to finish? All right. So, um, are we almost there? Should I send it? You can send Kai Sam before you get back okay. So um, when I gave these problems, they, I essentially had one of three options um, for how they uh, would take them. Either I could give them for homework, right? And if I gave them for homework, I don't know where they were getting their um, resources from, right? Were they working only on themselves? Were they talking to other people, friends, parents, anyone, online? I had no idea, all right? Um, or I could do it uh, in class. All right, and in class and have to collaborate, usually what would happen is one student or two students would come up with all the ideas and then it would kind of mat matriculate through the class. All right, so um, I don't know where are those, uh, some students weren't developing their problem solving skills. They were getting through the problem but not necessarily figuring out how and why a problem was started and solved. Uh, the third option was to do it so they couldn't talk to anyone like quiz, tests, that kind of thing. Uh, but then there comes an issue of they get into a block and they kind of shut down. I have great comics for uh, each of those situations. Um, <laughs> opening at 36, 35, Just tell us when to laugh. Okay, <laughs> hey, you should have already laughed three times. <laughs> um, okay, so that's how I came up with, I, I, had a, I wanted a new way to assess. And I had a little list of goals for that. So I wanted it low risk, all right, so they would be willing to make mistakes, all right. I uh, want them to be able to look at what they had done before and correct the errors that they had, all right. I also wanted them to be able to get feedback on what they were doing, all right. So the uh, answer to that question was something I like to call an iterated quiz, all right. So basically what would happen is I would give them the uh, assignment. This is where I would like to show you the assignment. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, go, yeah. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. This is where they would ask anybody, keep going. Uh, this is like one student knows everything and then it kind of spreads. I don't have time, but keep going. Uh, and yeah, there's Calvin making up words to answer the question and uh, he thought pizza and gave up. So yeah, that seems to be what happened, so keep going. Uh, so yeah, there's my goals, so next. And yeah, so this is the question that I always like to ask. All right, I love this question. This is a great question. All right, uh, it's so simple, and um, but really, really complicated to solve. A lot of stuff has to go into someone answering this question. So you can go to the next one. And this is the sheet of paper that I give them on day one. All right, that's it. Okay. So I hand this out, and I you can go to the next one. I uh, give them the first day, they can ask clarifying questions about the problem. All right, what does a unit square mean? Some of my English language learners, what is an equilateral triangle, stuff like that. I don't answer anything about how to solve the problem. All right, then they have five to 10 minutes to solve it. All right, a lot of people solve it incorrectly the first time, but they think it's right. So what happens is before they have class on Tuesday, I go back and I put comments on what they did. What they did well, what they didn't do well, how they could proceed. All right, and then I collect that back on Tuesday and hand them another blank sheet. All right, and they have another chance to try it for 10 to 15 minutes since they know a little bit more what to do. All right, then I collect that 
put comments on the Tuesday one, staple the Monday and Tuesday one. They can read it, ask questions on Wednesday morning when they're looking at it, talk with people a little bit, then I take it back from them, give them a new blank copy. And then one more day on Thursday, last chance they get a little more time, and on Friday they reflect on their entire week of what they did. So you know, kind of working the vocabulary, what they do, so you can know that's one. So here's the solution to the problem. So I'm just filling this up just as this is how I kind of direct kids to solve it. They assign a variable, go through the algebra. Um, this is how I'm kind of leading them. But if they choose a different way to solve it, um, I'm okay with that. I let them keep on exploring that path, All right, which is really important. So you go to the next one. So big question, what about the high flyers? Right? So for some kids, 15 minutes is enough time to solve this problem. For a lot of kids, they need the entire week just to even get close. So what you can, do, what I do is I ask them to redo the problem, but do it in a different way. So they have to approach it in a completely different way. Some of the other problems, I just kind of rephrase it. Make it an arbitrary value. Do a slightly different problem. Shift it a little bit so that those people that are the highest students keep on getting challenged, keep on getting pushed. But they're not, um, the middle kind of 60% of kids can keep on working on solving the problem on their own. You can go to the next one. That's backwards. Forward. Forward. Okay, so here's the rubric that I use uh, to grade this. Now, um, only at the very, very end of this is solving it correctly. All right, the top one is just, are you coming up with your own ideas? The next one is, are you justifying what you're doing? The next one is, can you work from top to bottom? All right, are you making mistakes in your process? All right, you can on this one. And what, these are kind of what I'm asking them, all right? Am I supplying you with the ideas to solve this, or are you doing it? Did you justify why you did these things? Were you pretty much error-free, no matter what way you chose to do? All right, is your diagram correct, and how well did you explain it? Were you using colloquial language, or were you using your vocabulary effectively? Excellent. All right, so low stakes, I give quizzes every day, all right? So this is just worth five days of quizzes. So very, very low stakes. And quizzes are like 20% of the total grade, so they have the opportunity to take those risks and um, have a chance to fail. All right, you can go ahead. How much do you The importance. Oh, cool. All right, so let's take another closer look at this. Um, so this column right here is worth 5.5. Right, so if they just do nothing, that's my 5.5 range. And it goes to 7, 8.5, 10. And I oftentimes cir circle in between the two of them. All right, so um, if they do, if I only have to give them like one hint, I'll like circle in between the two, uh, practicer and, or expert. If they make like one little tiny mistake, um, then it's between like the two and uh, practitioner and expert, all right? But a key point here is, especially here, they are corrected with prompts, all right? So they can make mistakes, all right? Um, and they can still get a high grade, all right? It's about growth through the week, not just how your first attempt was. Uh, you go to the next one. All right, so average student. This is kind of the week process of where I expect kind of the average student to be. So first day, try some diagrams. Maybe one of them's gonna be right. Um, second day, they have that accurate diagram from suggestions that I made and they start trying to use algebra. Um, third day, they're actually getting through that algebra a little bit, some mistakes. Fourth day, they've corrected their mistakes and they're getting almost to the answer. Um, and their explanation is decent, not great. So where they get circled on the rubric, next one, is right in there. So they're getting like a 42.5 to 45.5. And I'm circling somewhere in those um, bubbles, all right, for, usually for an average student. So next one. So this is my advanced students, students that are answering the problem and then getting the chance to answer the second time, all right? So sometimes uh, my advanced students kind of make an error in this day and they just have to retry again, but a lot of them try it in two different ways. Uh, next one. And then this is where they're kind of scoring, somewhere in these regions. Uh, next one. So then my low level student, they struggle with the diagram. They take a couple days on it. Then when they get to the algebra, they they really work hard, they struggle on it, and 
hopefully they're getting to a point where they're getting some significant algebra on there. So next one. And then this is usually where they get, and on this problem they do pretty well in the diagram. Other problems, the diagram's harder to do, so that would change. But yeah, that's the eighth um, grade range. We just look at the demo. Uh, next. So here's an example of an average student day one. All right, so I put some comments on here, and I think this stuff was from like the next day. They were just kind of checking things out. But as you can see, they had an incorrect diagram. They tried. Uh, next one. Day two, they got really creative and kind of bored at one point. Um, <laughs> but uh, they were still kind of unsure of themselves. All right, they had a little bit of work, but they didn't really know where to go. So I gave them the advice of assign a variable and see what happens. So next one. Unfortunately, they didn't assign a variable, but they started putting these marks on, and they said, oh, it's approximately one fourth, so I can run through the answer with one fourth. So a lot more work is getting done on this. Um, but they still haven't assigned a variable, so I gave them hints on exactly where to assign it. Uh, next one. They didn't really take my advice, but as you can see, there's a lot more work here on the paper. All right? They're actually playing around with algebra, making good attempts, and this is the type of thing I want to see. How much growth do they have over the week? Uh, next one. None? Okay, next one was like an advanced student, and they solved it in a different way, but yeah, I'm done. Thank you.